Coming up, we are making really cute miniature fabric baskets. And welcome to The Sewing Report, I'm Jen. This channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable. I know lots of us are looking for scrap-friendly projects, and that's what we're doing today, introducing the super simple mini basket. This is a free pattern available at thesewingreport.com. There's a dedicated blog post to this sewing project, and that's where you'll find the downloadable template. I'm going to link it down below in the description box, so check for it there. And this is a pretty easy and quick sew. You could probably make a few of these in an afternoon and there are many different variations you could do interfacing with sf 101 you could do batting or some sort of foam interfacing which i've done for this one and there's just lots of things you could do you could do kind of a pieced version so i've chosen to use the peppermint fabrics by figo fabrics and these are available in the sewing report etsy shop along with some of the other supplies i'll be featuring today so let's get into the tutorial after you've downloaded the pattern, print it out and make sure it's sized at 100%. There's a 1 inch square that you can measure for accuracy. Cut out the two pieces with scissors. I'm going to show you two different ways to stabilize the main fabric. The first being Quilting Cotton and Pellon Shape Flex 101, which is a fusible product. This will give the basket a moderate level of shape. What I do is lay the fabric right side up with the glue dots facing the wrong side of the fabric. Then I spritz water on the fabric and press with an iron or heat press. Trace and cut out two template pieces from the main fabric. Pattern weights help keep the paper in place while you're working. If you're using directional prints, you'll want to mirror them with the longest side of the template on top so they end up facing the same way. The other method is for a quilted version. I used a scrap piece of foam stabilizer and cut fabric slightly larger. Place the fabric right side up on top of the stabilizer. To keep the fabric from shifting around, I pinned both layers in a few strategic spots. Now it's time to quilt. In a previous video, I shared how I was able to attach a walking foot to the Juki DDL 8700 sewing machine. With a stitch length of 4.0, I quilted curvy lines throughout the entire piece. There is no exact precision with this technique, just go with the flow and remove pins as you approach them. This wasn't intentional, but with the Christmas tree print, the quilt lines sort of resemble drifting snowbanks in the winter. Shameless plug for the purple air-soluble marking pens available in the Sewing Report Etsy shop. It's time for a new one. Trace and cut out two template pieces from the now quilted fabric. Power tip, because this is the outside of the basket, I cut the main pieces just outside the lines and the lining pieces just inside the lines so the main pieces are slightly larger and that helps the lining fit better inside. I even busted out the fancy 8-inch Wilkinson gold side bends for a real luxury experience. For the quilted version, I wanted a more defined boxy shape, so I stitched lines at the corners and bottom edges. Keep in mind you need to account for the quarter inch seam allowance. I did this by measuring and marking lines a quarter inch in from the edges before sewing. Then at the sewing machine, I stitched all around the edges of both pieces, about an eighth of an inch, and directly on the new marked lines. If you start at the top side, right where it intersects with one of the corner lines, you can do it all in one continuous stitch line. Completely new to sewing machines, be sure to check out my beginner playlist for tips and explanations of some of the basics.
Let's work on the lining pieces using a coordinating print from the Peppermint collection, taking a bit of a shortcut by folding the raw fabric in half right sides together to do both pieces at once. This time I'm using a pink Chaco pen for marking. Here's another tip. After you trace the pattern piece, pin the two layers in a few spots so it stays put while you cut them out. And remember that I'm cutting just inside of the lines for the lining pieces. Now we're ready to pin the sides and bottom edges. One of the lining sides will be used for turning later, so I marked about 3 inches to leave open and not sew. This is going to be tight, but if you sew that side just under an inch at both ends, it'll work and you can still box out the corners. Over at the sewing machine, sew the side and bottom edges of the lining with a quarter inch seam allowance. Backstitch at the beginning and end of each stitch line. Don't forget to leave a section open on that last side. Yes, your lines will be super short here. Press the seams open. If you have a mini iron, that will come in handy. Here's what that opening looks like. Now you'll want to pinch the corners in order to box them out. Instead of pins, I like to glue baste them with Elmer's washable school glue in a fine tip bottle. I do have a few of these in the Etsy shop while supplies last. Dab some glue starting in the center at the seams and work your way out. Then hit the area with a dry iron. At the sewing machine, stitch both corners with a quarter inch seam allowance. And don't forget to backstitch. Press the seam allowance up. This will help the basket keep its shape. Let's work on the exterior pieces now. We're pretty much repeating the same steps as the lining. Pin the pieces right sides together. Over at the sewing machine, sew the side and bottom edges with a quarter inch seam allowance. Backstitch at the beginning and end. Press the seams open and pinch the corners together. Instead of pins, I used a wonder clip at each center seam to secure until sewing. Then stitch up the corners with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now let's prep the handle pieces. Take the handle template and trace and cut two of them out. You can also substitute ribbon or twill tape. Just cut them the same length as the pattern piece. And we'll be glue basting again. Fold each piece the long way in half and give it a quick press. Open it back up and fold each side in towards the center and press again. Run a thin line of glue along the inside edge and hit it with a dry iron. Edge stitch both long sides with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. If you're having trouble holding onto the pieces as they run through the feed dogs, use something like an awl to hold the fabric closer to the needle. We're getting to the actual basket construction. Turn the main exterior piece right side out. It really helps to press out all of those corners to give it shape. Attaching the handles. I marked a half inch from each end. You'll be placing the handles on the sides with the visible seams. 
Mark either a half inch from the outside corner or just under one inch from the center seam. This is how you'll be sewing the handles onto the main piece, upside down and on the right side of the fabric. I personally prefer to have the side of the handle with the open fold facing in while it's being sewn down, which means it will actually be facing out once it's completed. At the sewing machine, stitch the handles with less than a quarter inch seam allowance and extend it a half inch past the edge. It's a bit tricky to keep the handles from shifting around, so complete this step carefully. With scissors, clip off the excess handle pieces. Now with the lining inside out, insert the main piece into it right side out. Match up the opposite seams and use pins or clips to hold in place. With a quarter inch seam allowance, sew all around the basket opening. No need to backstitch here, just overlap an inch or so once you return to the starting point. Okay, so now you've got a very weird looking thing here. Remember that opening in the lining? That's how you'll be turning the entire project right side out. Take it slow and try not to rip any stitches. In hindsight, I probably could have left my opening just a tad larger and it would have been easier to turn. Dab some glue on the inside edge of the opening and press it shut. Edge stitch that section closed at the sewing machine, back stitch at the beginning and end. You're definitely going to want to press the basket well, particularly the top edge and you could go back over the corners too. Final step is to top stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance all around that top edge. Back stitching is not necessary here either because you can once again just overlap stitches since you're basically just sewing a big loop. And I did switch to a longer stitch length for sewing quilted sections or layers. really love how these turned out. They remind me a little bit of those baskets you get at the grocery store. And in fact, I think this might work for those American Girl dolls. I feel like the sizing is about right if you wanted to give your doll a little accessory. Other things you can use these baskets for are obviously maybe craft room storage or little gift bags if you want to put small trinkets in there. You can also omit the handle if you wanted to and just have a basket just straight up if you wanted to. But I really do like the handles. You can also switch out the fabric handles for something like ribbon or some sort of twill tape. So there's just lots of things you could do. Let me know what you think of this project down below in the comments and be sure to check out some of my other holiday inspired projects. I've got lots of them in the holiday so long playlist from last year and of course I'm using the same fabrics. Anyways, I'm Jen with The Sewing Report. I'll see you guys again in the next video and remember whatever you're doing, make it fun.